sisters, cousins, uncles, aunts, friends, and for what I know, grandparents too. The brain would fool the girl. Today marks the 25th anniversary of the founding of the school. 25 years of consistent, sporting, and academic achievement. Of targets striven towards and goals attained. Of aspiration and realization. From which it evolved amongst pupils and staff. A tradition of fairness towards fellow creatures. Of loyalty to school and country. A sense of duty and honor. Of being straight and playing the game. And above all, a tradition of happy girls. And may that tradition still be clear to only 50th anniversary of this establishment. Here, here. I won't detain you any longer except to explain that each form in the school has assumed responsibility for one entire evening's entertainment across this festival. This mantle of responsibility falls tonight by lottery on the floor form. Who, with a little help from members of staff who have asked me to announce their offering, a play of two acts entitled Daisy Pulls It Off. Thank you. I'm proud. I hope I can make a success of it. You will, my dear. You've got this far. I'll have a good 
The summer holidays passed and all too miserably for Daisy, until it came to say goodbye to those who she loved the best. Board the train, Daisy dear, otherwise you'll find yourself stranded on the platform and the train speeding off about you.
Martian, Madcap, and Poet of the Upper Four. I say, aren't you a new bug? I mean, girl. Yes, Daisy Meredith. Daisy Meredith. That's right. I'm to be in the Upper Four. Oh, Jubilati, that's my form. Perhaps we could have just next to each other. One can have an uncommonly good time at Grangewood. For as long as one well, doesn't upset the priest or the mistresses too much. Say, are you fond of setting up studs? I should say, I have four brothers and we constantly play tricks on each other. Can you swear? A little. Oh, capital. You'll soon improve. For if the weather's fine enough, the entire school goes for early morning dip in the sea. There's an absolutely scrummy beach at the bottom of a cliff. Secret path is endowed. Oh, how perfectly ripping! That's Claire Vermont over there. I bet her. Oh, how uncommonly lucky. Claire's Major's sports captain and head girl. She's a first rate tennis and hockey player, as well as having a brain. <laughs> we all adore her. Her people, well, her mother, actually own Greenwood. I say! Her family used to live in the building. And then, just over 20 years ago, they started to lose money after Earl Duke and Beaumont died. And so, they lease it out to the school gardeners. Each year, the Beaumonts have lost more and more money. And now it looks as though they'll have to sell to the school gardeners. There is talk that the family's fortunes could be saved if only the Beaumont treasure could be found. Treasure? Yes! I hunted for hours, looking for trapdoors, looking for secret panels and passageways and clues. But it's only hearsay that nothing's ever been found. Trixie Martin, you to go see Matron in her office at once. She's in a fearful mood over something. Oh, dash it. Mother's probably not named her to buy a new socks for. See you at tea, I expect, Daisy. Bye. Monica Smithers, school toady and chief crony of Sybil Burlington. I say, I've not seen you here before. It's my first time, actually. Daisy Meredith. Daisy. Oh, the scholarship girl. That's right. Ever been to school before? Yes. Yeah, so Read and write, can you? What on elementary school girls are a new breed at Greenwood? You see. We have no idea what to expect. Not that I have ever been in a position to meet anyone from an elementary school before. Mummy and Daddy are so frightfully particular about that kind of thing. In our situation, one has to be. Some people do anything for money. <laughs> oh! By the way, Miss Gibson likes to see all the new girls in her study on their first day. Oh, really? Up the staircase on your left. First door on the right. Thank you. <sighs> what an absolutely sickening girl. Now, where did she say? Up the staircase to her left. First door on the right. Now to meet the head. Alice Fitzpatrick, prefect. Deputy sports captain in best charm of Claire Beaumont. What are you doing knocking on there, child? I've got to see Miss Gibson. Well, you won't find him there, silly. See only a broom cupboard. Oh, the time was told. Some appeal some appeal too funny, was it? Don't worry. I'll take you Miss Gibson myself. You're me by the look of things. Yes. I'm called Daisy Meredith, and I'm to be in the upper four. Daisy. Well, that's a nice enough name. Tell me, Daisy, are you fond of games, hockey and tennis and such like? I'm afraid I've not much opportunity to play hockey or tennis. You see, they didn't teach it to me by my last week. Any bounders. It's better for that. I tell you all the rules of hockey and tennis. I sweated up and blown the books at home. Really, it's not quite the same as doing, but if you have the sporting spirit, you'll do it finally. Play up and play the game. That's what we say here. There's a poor girl we take on girls who don't play it. What's that? The school will honour us for it. What's that? The school will honour us for it. A record of achievements by girls who is truly proud to have in its portals. Daisy gazed wistfully at the simple oath board. With names engraved in gold for former pupils. I mean, Grangewood, to be proud of me one day, and perhaps my name.
young man to love. Headmistress of the Rainwood School. Daisy Meredith, Mum. Oh, welcome, my dear. Into Rainwood. How very pleased we are to have you here. Thank you. I need not say, of course, that the advent of Greenwood's first scholarship pupil one was arrived here by way of internet and not by way of parental monetary money. has caused a certain amount of trepidation within the school. Much will be expected of you, both morally and intellectually. But from the scholastic reports that I have received from you, and from the impression that I have of the girl sitting before me, I am sure that you will fulfill all expectations. Everyone will be anxious to help you in any way that you may require during your first few weeks here. As we do all new girls, I hope uh, you will be very happy here, my dear, and will always stay true to the motto of Grangewood, one of which is also that of the Belmont family, whose ancestral home this is. Honest star, qualm, magna. How great are noble things. Now, I'm sure you're tired, Daisy. The supper bell will be ringing shortly, and Matron will wish to see you before then. I trust you will settle in quickly, my child. Well, Run along. Thank you, Miss Gibson.
I wish to uphold its tone and its reputation on the playing field. Not to mention the good name of the upper four, you will cease your friendship with Daisy Meredith. Why? Scholarship girls are different from us. Oh, please, I will not have this game into in my lesson. 
The holidays finished yesterday. You are here to work. Thank you, Jay. an excellent reading. You may return to your seat. <laughs> Linda, will you face me? Come here, please. What is that on the back of your gym slip? You have my part on the back of your gym slip. <laughs> Please remember, Jason, you are not in elementary school now. We like grateful girls to look presentable, not in fair leaving tobogganing down the side of chalk pits. You may return to your Monica, have you anything to say to me? Then time you refrain from gossiping to your neighbours. <laughs> I have a brief appointment to keep with Miss Gibson, so I shall leave you straight with poems alone. And also the poems on pages 54, 57, and 58. For your compositions, once you've read the poem, I want you to choose one of the following exercises. Pens ready? One. Is patriotism productive of poetry? If so, why? <laughs> Summarise in headings the causes of England's greatness. Three, what difference would it make to the world if the British Isles were submerged by the sea? <laughs> Crazy! What do I see if you in your desk? Comics. Dreadful rags are confined to the common room. I would usually give an order mark for such an offence. But as you are new, I shall let you off. There are a copy of the school rules on the notice board. I suggest you make a point of reading them. Girls, I shall see you shortly. Belinda, take charge, please. Yes, Miss Granville. Thank 
Skotlowski, the enigmatic Russian music teacher. Good morning, girls. Good morning, Mrs. Skotlowski. Remain stuck. Now, to begin, we will all sing the song The Ash Grove. Okay. 
won't. In any way, everyone else has stopped believing that the treasure actually exists. As a rule, one ceases to believe it by the time they reach about the lower third. Father like fairies. Father Christmas. Everyone, that is, except poetical types, such as myself. Romantically minded new girls, and possibly Claire. Nay, let it just be the two of us. Let's call ourselves. <coughs> I know! The Dark Horse Secret Society! Oh, yes! It can be our secret symbol. Why don't we have to write notes to each other? We need a motto too. Password. <coughs> Aduka Bert Adapter. No, too long. Abs Birch Mill. No. Of the building, 
And now I believe the treasure to be a legend, a mere myth. However, if I had put anywhere else in the school, I would most happy to know it. I am fascinated by the folk tales of the English. Good.
tomorrow morning and inform me the purpose of this midnight visitation. Oh, I'll wait Miss Cole to deal with those babes. I'll see you both tomorrow. Jemima, we're for it now. Will Claire report us to Miss Gibson? What do you think? If she thinks we'd be utterly evil, she might. No, the worst of it is, is whether the seconds recognise our forces or not. They'll think we're absolute sneaks if they did. Oh, they won't, will they? How else would Claire have discovered them? What have we got to find out? She's who sneaked on us. Treasure can only be uncovered by whosoever has wit enough to unravel these 
Christmas. My father hunted unceasingly for the treasure, right up until his death four years ago. But since then, no one's had much impetus to carry on with the search. Oh, and the will did say another important clue lies with my uncle David. But as he's been gone 20 years or so, there's a little hope there. I was looking at your portraits of your family in the Great Hall, and I noticed that one of the frames was empty. Ah, yes. Now, that contained the only known portrait of my uncle David. My grandfather had it removed out of the quarrel. How perfectly tragic. Where's your grandfather? A scientist. Why do you ask? Because in his portrait, he's holding a jolly queer looking instrument of some kind. It's a device, apparently, for measuring the distance between stars. My grandfather was tremendously keen on astronomy. How uncommonly rare! <coughs> there goes the bell to the end of Off you go, kiddies. And thanks most awfully for showing such an interest in the treasure. I tell you, Claire, we need to find it for you. Who oh, remember? No more midnight expeditions. <laughs> <coughs> we'll be perfect. On a ride. Oh, what an out and out sport. Claire is absolutely the most adorable girl I've ever met. I'd risk anything for her. Except, I wish you wouldn't call us kiddies. It's better than being called babes, like the first and second. I say, Jason, did you notice how perfectly sad Claire looked? Just for a moment, when mentioning her father's death. Yes! I know just how she jolly well feels. Why? Is your father? Yes! Ten years ago, he was a ship's doctor in the Royal Navy. He was reported missing in fear death when his ship went down in the Baltic in the Battle of the I'm immensely sorry. I was fearful, of course, when it happened. I say, we must hurry. Because Granville will go wild with willing for her class. I say, Daisy, I wish you'd slap off a bit. You'll end up with brain fever if you don't carry on at this rate. She bloody! We're first in! I see, Tracy. Look at the black ones. We don't stand for sneaks at Grangewood, especially not elementary ones. Jemima! Someone risked their necks to write that! There must have been the second. They recognised our voices last night. Quick! Elementary school girl to be low 
of them those are the type of girl who usually go to Grangewood. Yet, honesty shone forth from Daisy's face, and the ring of truth was within her speech. Very well, Daisy. I shall take to word for it this time that you truly believe the idea you had it in was presentable. But maybe next time, perhaps, a little blotting paper would not come amiss. Now, who is this week's book monitor? Ah, Belinda. Can you return these exercise books to their owners, please? Thank you. Now, girls, just a brief word on the topics of this year's school poetry competition. Details of which you will find pinned to the notice board. There are two subjects which you must choose one and one only. The first subject being heroes. Have you all got that? Heroes. Belinda, have you pencil sharp you can lend? Dora Johnston, please. The second subject is a poem which must bear the title The Medications of a Lighthouse. <laughs> These poems must not exceed 50 lines length and must be handed in by Friday week. Daisy found it a struggle to concentrate for the rest of the lesson. She was convinced that Sybil had a hand in face of her essay. For one, Sybil's responsibilities as vice captain of the four were to collect in prep work and hand it in to the appropriate teacher, thereby giving her any opportunity to wreak any damage she chose. If only Sybil didn't hear me so, life would be absolute bliss if she now had a chance. I'm confident she has some good in it, as most prickly pears do. But she mustn't be allowed to carry on her beastly stunts, and to pull to win the honour of the other fourth. And that of Grangewood, honest of one magna, pink, spess, he fold it! Beginning from the bottom. C. 
Percy Burl Burlington. Twenty-one out of one hundred marks. Dora Johnson, forty-eight. Monica Smithers, seventy-four. Trixie Martin, eighty-one. Belinda Metz, ninety-one. Daisy Meredith. Well done, especially Linda and Daisy. Sybil, I am surprised at you. Your marks are usually better than this. If they continue to be this appalling, I shall have you sent down to the First form for geography lesson. Geography was the second lesson of that morning, which failed to leave any impression upon Daisy's mind, when she was dwelling upon another matter, far removed from the jungles and mountains of Peru. You may put your books away now, Charles. I would like to see in the main music room at four o'clock. Those girls were singing solo in the end of term concert. Thank you. As the apple thought, the heads began to perch. Super bad to caught Daisy's arm. Look here, Daisy Meredith! Unless you devise some means of getting yourself removed from Grangewood within the next fortnight, I'm going to tell Miss Gibson what I saw on the paper. For the piece of paper to which Sybil had referred to, had printed upon it the answers to the previous Wednesday's geography test. And we don't stand for cheats at Greatwood. Books and coats. 
or even a biography of Sir Digby Beaumont. Capital idea. Let's go down the back stairs. Less chance of a meeting or maid seeing us there. Why? Is the library normally out of bounds? Yes, unless there's a prefect or mistress in there. But we didn't promise Claire not to go to the library, did we?
I do think you have the most gorgeous character of anyone I know. <laughs> I dare say you're right. Come on, I want to finish my poem. Specialized 
in the town has been observed conversing with boys from St. Hugh Girls County Grammar School. This must stop. Mingling with brothers, cousins, and boys at supervised social events is perfectly in order. But this casual hobnobbing can do nothing but harm the great wood reputation. In a drama will be led by Miss Waller this Sunday afternoon for any girls interested. Names in by Wednesday, please. Finally, we have come to a matter of the utmost gravity. A book of a story, part of the Sir Digby Bearwood collection, has been taken. <laughs> I hesitate to say stolen <laughs> from school library. Daisy Meredith! 
chum. Got it. I arranged it to join the bottle fight. What's that? It's like a pillow fight, but with hot water bottles. You fill them half full of water for extra suppleness, and then bam! You're off. It's a prime stunt. We'll do it tomorrow evening when the three's are having their baths. Sounds a talking idea, Trixie. I feel better already. <laughs> Tune, Mr. Thompson always whistling. Do you know it, Trixie? Hmm. A Welsh song. You should know it, Daisy. <laughs> All through the night, that's the one. Strangely reminiscent of something. Who? Oh, your mate probably sang it to you when you put an infant on her knee. And he always whistles the same tune. Slightly cracked, poor old chap, so they say. The board's people like the play. <laughs> because you were treasure hunting. <laughs> no, we've given that all up ever since we discovered only the juniors believe in the treasure. <laughs> Mr. Skoblowski was not convinced. However, I know very well that you and the other girl have the book hidden away. Oh, Mr. Skoblowski, you're hurting my arm. But I intend to find it. It is imperative. You do not realize. Let's play a game to join. 
trolley up, shall we? We should have some time till lights out. Right -o. How about what we all know? I know, the dictionary game. Great suggestion, Daisy. Here we are. Paper. Thank <laughs> you. 
in future? Oh, I want to water bottles, similarly destroyed, will be replaced with the aid of contributions from pocket money. Position defenders will be given hot bricks wrapped in flannel to take to bed. <laughs> more pleasant matters. Greatwood have reached the final of the county hockey championships. <laughs> and we'll meet Vern Coon Young Ladies College next Saturday for the match that will take place here on Greatwood's own hockey pitch. Owing to the fifth form's enforced absence from school this week, required will be selected by Claire from the fourth form. Not the happiest of circumstances to meet such leviathans as Vern Coombe, but remember girls that even if we are to lose this very vital match, as long as you play the game and play it to the best of your very considerable abilities, you will not have failed, Grangewood. Finally, it gives me tremendous delight to announce the results of this year's school poetry competition. Although many entries were worthy of high commendation, all the credit this year goes to the upper fourth, who have submitted the two winning entries. In second place, we have the Meditations of a Lighthouse, produced by Sybil Burlington. <laughs> and this year's winning entry is a poem on the subject of by Daisy Meridian. Well done. But I, I... Look, quiet, girls, please. <laughs> I'm out here. Great pleasure in reading the extract from the indeed excellent piece of book, Heroes by Daisy Meridian. Thank you. 
say that you had no idea that Tracy Martin's poem was submitted under your name. Not at all. Oh, my honor, Miss Gibson. And yet, the name Daisy Meredith inscribed at the top of the entry compares remarkably well with other examples of your signature. But I would never do such a thing to Trixie. She's my best chum. Not even in fun? Not even in fun, Miss Gibson. Hmm. A certain member of your form, I shall not mention her name, came to me with your geography textbook, in which I found this. A printed list of answers to a certain geography test taken some time ago, in which you came out on top. Miss Gibson, honestly, on my own, I had no idea about the geography paper. A test! <laughs> I'll just start. At the back of your boot house. I borrowed it. I can't tell you why, Miss Gibson. It's a point of honor. But I swear to you, I have nothing to do with the geography test. Or the poem. I must say, Daisy, I find extremely difficult to believe anything of a girl who has remained silent while her school fellows have suffered the loss of three days games and confinement to the school grounds because of something she had not the courage to own up to. A girl also blind to the distress that this seeming theft has caused to the Beaumont family, particularly Claire. But I would never do anything to hurt Claire, Miss Gibson. Mm, I can only conclude, my dear, that perhaps we have demanded a little too much of you, and that the gulf between Schools such as Greywood and of the elementary kind are wider than between. And I see the events of the past few weeks being as much my fault as yours in having placed you under the tremendous pressures resulting in the matters now under discussion. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Gibson. But as far as academic work and games go, I have not found myself under any of the tremendous pressures you speak of. Neither am I aware of any enormous gulf between Grangewood and my previous school as you are. If the gulf you speak of is mainly moral, as you seem to imply, the only pressures I have encountered here at Grangewood are those from girls who, because they have money and therefore influence, a remarkably queer notion to my mind. And his only code of conduct is that of lying, sneaking, and bullying, and seeing to wipe the grounds for me because of my ignorant elementary school way. I try to live up to the high standards set here, and to their irritation, succeed! That will do, Daisy Meredith! <laughs> Shut up. 
the two of us been here in the sun. Things have been a lot jolly since you've twisted your ankle, I admit. Get us even <laughs> further away from discovering the treasure. I lay awake at night and think about it. No wonder you're looking so pale and ghastly. What? I'm fit as a fiddle. It would be topping, though, if you could find the treasure before I leave. I do so want to make it up to everyone, being such a frightful disappointment. Good luck, Daisy, old thing. I've got to up and play the game. I've got to go join the others in the field. Wait, Daisy, I saved this dinner. It's a new
be a wet blanket.
strike from the original form. And then we're going to gut the side of the cliff together. Understand? <laughs> Monica, if you don't do as I say, we'll fall, the both of us, into the morass below. Do you understand now? Yes! Good. Daisy gave a tongue twice at the end of the line. Slowly, Monica began to be hauled up the side of the cliff. Daisy frantically searching for her footprints, so as to relieve the burden slightly from the others. Hang on, Monica! Almost there! What is that roaring sound? Daisy leaned over. And there disappeared the ledge on which she and Monica had lately been standing upon. Daisy's heart skipped a beat. Just to see in the wind, Monica, nothing to worry about. Rapidly sweating blood. Winnie, Dora, and Belinda hauled the now almost unconscious Monica to the top. And on the last breath, finally, Daisy herself was pulled to safety. Whereupon, they all collapsed. <laughs> Daisy lies 
dangerously ill in the sanatorium. Sovereign, it is suspected from brain fever, resulting, we think, from the trouble in which she has been involved here. She cries in her delirium of dishonor, exams and the like. We fear that she may not last the week and is certainly too ill to be taken to a hospital. <laughs> However, the crisis point as to whether Daisy lives or dies will be reached this evening. And we ask you to be quieter than usual in your activities, particularly if any of them take place on the lawns outside of the sand. Oh, poor, poor Daisy. Yes, simple. <laughs> <laughs> I have something that I would like the whole school to hear. I promise you, Miss Gibson. Can you not come and tell me later in my... No, Miss Gibson. I'm sorry, I must speak now. Very well. Continue. Everyone. Well, most people believe Daisy Meredith to be a cheat, a liar, a sneak, and an absolute rotter. Well, she isn't. She's one of the pluckiest, most honourable, and sporting girls one could ever hope to meet. Last night, she saved one of her me from certain death when we were stranded on a cliff face after a midnight feast we'd held, in which she was not involved. Wales. Where you spent many happy, 
boyhood holidays. Isn't that right, Father? It certainly was, my darling. We bore a family and lived very happily. I earning a living as a doctor until war broke out. And so, wishing to serve my country, I enlisted the Navy. However, one day, my ship was torpedoed, <laughs> sunk, <laughs> and I survived by clinging to a spar of wood for two days until I was rescued by a passing ship whereupon I lost all consciousness for a week. <laughs> On coming to, it was discovered I lost all memory of who I was and where I'd come from. All my written papers had been washed away through my ordeal at sea. <laughs> I was utterly destitute, friendless, and I might have remained so if it hadn't been for a Russian count aboard ship who befriended me, escaping from the revolution. As luck would have it, he was destined for England and having gained a job in the English girls' public school, he found work and shelter for me. That teacher's name was... Mrs. Gamowski! Yes. Gradually over the years, my memory returned and to my surprise, not only did I find myself working in the birthplace, but my daughter was a pupil at the school which has since been founded. I was determined not to reveal myself to Daisy until I could offer her something more than my poverty. Though, there is no shame in being poor. <laughs> so, I parted with Mr. Skoblowski to uncover the treasure that my father had hidden. Mr. Sklowski's strange one manner towards us, and also that clue, the Sir Diffie said lay with his youngest son. That tune you were always whistling, Sir David, all through the night. Ever my favourite tune, I confess. The liquid the luminous device, and the comet, the hairy star. Claire, good afternoon, my plucky young cousin. Now, Uncle David, for the entire school awaits upon your return. That won't be for a while, I'm afraid. This scholar's gone on a convalescent holiday first. And well deserved, I see. Oh, in a while, if you look out of the window, you will see that wretched M. Sybil Burlington depart Grangewood forever. They aren't expelling her. Oh, I should jolly well thank the R. That's all she's confessed to. Oh, Claire, please don't let them expel her. Give her one last chance. She must have some good in her, two bones up the way she did. It's not her fault snobbish attitudes have been bred into her. I mean, great you can help change them. Oh, Claire, please do be a sport and have a word with Miss Gibson on my behalf. Very well. I'll do my level best. I suppose every worm can turn. <laughs> I'll catch her before she leaves Miss Gibson's study. But I say, this is all becoming uncommonly dismal. There's to be games and dancing this evening, and the entire school would simply adore it if you could come down just for a moment. Will you? Everyone will be immensely bucked. And I'll be by your side. Very well. It's topping of them to want to see me before I leave. Oh, splendid. <coughs> must go, old chum. There goes the bell crack. I must go too, I'm afraid. I have to supervise the babies. See you later, Kitty. Daisy, I'll leave you to get dressed. I must send a telegram to Mother. Oh, Father, I'm so tremendously happy. So am I. More than words could ever say. <laughs> <laughs> How absolutely top hole to see you. Daisy, you don't know what a beast I've been. I'm so little dead. You saved me from expulsion. It's so talking to see you. Now we can be friends. Can we? Can we really? <laughs> of course we can, my poor darling. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I am not an experienced or indeed a good speaker at the best of times of which this is one. But I will say that the recovery of the Beaumont treasure has not only enabled me to rediscover my family and to disclose my true identity <laughs> and keep Grangewood within the Beaumont family, but some of the money from the treasure will go towards funding a scholarship for another elementary school girl to attend Grangewood. This will be called the Daisy Meredith Scholarship. First of all, I ask you all to accept with open arms the scholarship girls who come to Queen. Thanks all for the top hole reception you've given me and my father this evening. I'm proud to be, once again, the girl of Green Room of the Apple Four. We're proud of you, Daisy. Secondly, I ask you all to accept with open arms the girls who come to Green Room. They may have heaps to learn from us about our sporting and academic traditions, but my word, have you heaps to learn from them too. The beginning we have made here at admitting elementary school girls is small. But I look forward to the day when Grangewood, along with other public schools in England, become truly public in admitting all scholars, moneyed or not, within its portals of life. And to the day when there is a Grangewood in every city, town, and village in England! Poor Daisy leaves us for a well-deserved convalescence. I ask her to lead us all in singing the school song. Daisy. Daisy, how perfectly scrubby everything turned out to be! And what fun lies ahead! school.